What did you ask, Jill? I said I nominate hats. Hats? Mm. Did you know, did you see the new knitting, the knitting, you know, by the author of Knitting the National Parks, Nancy Bates, she just came out with Knitting California today? Or no, yesterday? I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, her hats were nifty. And the California ones are pretty swell. I I loved some of those designs. Some of one of them that really was a standout was a monarch butterfly. Wow. And so the, the crown was just such a beautiful, like it looked like the wings with the with the black and the oranges. It was really striking. Oh, that sounds nice. No, I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, so, so welcome, everybody. I think we'll have probably people trickling in here. Um, welcome to Socktober. I'm Iris, and I am fortunate enough to work at Cashmere Goats in Camden, Maine. And we are kicking off our second Socktober. So Socktober last year was actually our first foray into the world of knit alongs um and and we were pretty casual about it and you know just sort of made space for people to come in on Sundays in the shop we didn't have a zoom component last year because we didn't really have a community that we were connecting with with our remote goats back then so a lot has changed in just one year and um yeah so the fun part about Socktober is it's just kind of a choose your own adventure because we all have our favorite sock styles and we have our favorite top down or bottom up, toe up. Um, and so and we just thought it would be fun to do this, do this again. And, and uh, my dog just got home from her walk. So I'm just going to mute myself for a minute and say hello to her. <laughs> Okay, she did a squeaky toy and then she zipped into the other into in the inside. So let's just start with a little go round and greeting. Um, so maybe tell us your name, tell us where you're from, tell us how you know about Cashmere Goat in Camden, and tell us if you're starting a sock or something for a foot uh, is the theme. So maybe it's baby booties or a Christmas stocking, but tell us what you're working on and what yarn you're using, if you remember all that. Um, so let's see, I am going to see, Gwen, would you like to kick us off? Sure. Um, my name is Gwen. I'm from the Mid-Hudson Valley in New York State, down near Poughkeepsie and Newburgh and New Paltz. Um, I working on a sock on for the first time on the the nine inch circular needles mm. so that's been fun and um i know the cashmere goat from many trips on the angelique and stopping at the yarn stores and stuff before we'd get on board so we had knitting projects to do and 18 years on the angelique so i knew the cashmere goat before it was the cashmere goat and now i continue to Every summer when I'm in Maine, I stop in and spend my money. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that is awesome. Um, yeah, so Kristen, so Kristen was on the Angelique trip that went out in September. Oh, by the way, Kristen, goat owner, says hello to everybody and welcome. She wanted me to pass that on. She very rarely can join us on our Wednesdays because we have in-store knitting on Wednesday afternoon, so she's usually there. Uh, but Kristen, it was her first time on the Angelique this fall, and uh -huh. Casapinka was on the trip, and this was one of the Sawmill Creek Fiber events. Oh, nice. Cruises. Nice. Um, and it was a really lovely time. Um, they had to postpone their trip by a day because of the hurricane. Oh, the weather, yeah. Mm -hmm. The sale the uh, Angelique well, went when Dennis was just a first mate instead of the owner. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. That's awesome. Well, yep. so great to have you. And thank you. You said this, but I tell me again where you're from. 
in the mid Hudson Valley area Hudson in New Valley. York. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Actually going cool. to the, there's a big um, New York state sheep wool, the wool and oh. sheep festival coming up. So I'm heading up to that in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm going to that too. So, Are you and, really? and, yep. And Kristen and some of our, our yarn designer friends. So um, maybe we'll have to figure out where we could meet up with some of our remote goats while we're on location oh, at Rhinebeck. We're going um, on Saturday. Cool. All right. Let's see. Um, how about next, Mary Ellen? Good to see you. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen from Media, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on just plain vanilla socks. <laughs> um, nice. This yarn, this yarn I ordered a year ago, and I wanted it's Arnie and Carlos uh, design line or something, and I just did a Google search, and it came up at the oh, cashmere geez. goat. And this is how I found the cashmere oh. goat with sock yarn. And then I got on the emails list and then did the other knit alongs because i found the sock yarn <laughs> this is so fun what a cool yeah. story yeah it's a good story so i've always knitted with the yankee knitter pattern i've been doing that for years mm -hmm. um but but that's writ written on double points and i so i wanted to do it on uh, i've made a couple on um the, you know, the magic loop, which I know how to do. But when it comes to the heel, I take it off and put it back on the the double points because mm -hmm. I just know how to do it by heart and it's easier. So this time I'm going to try and do it the right way. Uh. Sometimes sometimes easy is good, Mary Ellen, you know. I know, you, that's right. If you got a tried and true method, there's, there's no shame in, in that uh, for sure yeah if it works it works so uh anyway i i just love this yarn that this and the opal yarns that the pattern's already there and i use it for my on-the-go knitting that i can just grab and take with me and i usually start the other one so that if i always have like an easy part to do not the heel or any of that um plus i i can get the second sock syndrome very smart <laughs> that's great uh -huh. the self-patterning yarns are really fun and it sort of keeps you entertained as you're going and i and i definitely agree um the yankee knitter sock pattern that good old <laughs> socks for the yeah. whole family in the three weights of yarn yes. such a fabulous pattern top down I think it's the one that everybody in the shop learned on. And sometimes when I have new sock knitters, I suggest that they might try a worsted sock to start because it goes I think faster, that's a great idea. You know, yeah. and you learn the architecture of the sock and then it's not forever either if you hate it. So, um, um great. I have a question on, on the making socks with worsted yarn. Um, on the fingering yarn, when you walk on the sock, it, it feels very comfortable because it's it's actually the like the bumpy side that's on next to your foot. But okay. if you're making a worsted weight sock, it's you're gonna have it's not gonna be smooth on there. Are they comfortable? So a couple things. Um, it it I think it really. A depends on your wearer to some extent okay. and your and their sensitivity. Um, I've heard of some folks who find even just the like stockinette side, like uh -huh. the the uh, like or the bump side, you know, so like the reverse side of the stockinette to be a little sensitive for their feet. And so some wild sock knitters like to do reverse stockinette on the bottom mm -hmm. of their foot. Um, but, you know, last year, first October, Tracy, who works at the shop, knit a pair of socks using Wizard by Barocco, which is a worsted weight chainette stitch. So there's a lot of air in it. And it was really cool because it also has some great, like, sort of subtle striping. Um, 
And I thought that that was, I think that that would be a really comfortable sock. I mean, for me with a, with a heavier weight sock, you know, I think of a boot sock or I think of a sock around my house, you know, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, hiking, I don't, I probably wouldn't hike in a hand that sock just cause you know <laughs> why put the stress on the sock, but for sure, I actually have one of the patterns that I linked to in our Ravelry kind of collection for socks was a pattern that takes two strands of fingering to make a DK weight sock. Oh. And those are like my favorite cozy socks or with Birkenstocks. Okay. And so that's, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's too bumpy, but maybe that's just like, I, for me personally, I don't have a sensitive foot like that. I don't know. Do you have that posted up? Did you say? Yeah. So the, um, hi, and I'm, I'm Iris and I don't remember your name comes up as hey. I, oh, you're Judy. You're Judy. I'm hi. Judy also. Yeah. <laughs> and what's your last name, Judy? Gessner. Gessner. So you're Ju Judy G and we've got Judy E. Okay. We're good. Um, so yeah, in the welcome email that you got right. when you signed up, there's a link to the Ravelry kind of collection that okay. uh, we put together and you can take a peek at it there. Um, okay, I, I was looking at the videos. I did not look at the Ravelry yet, and yeah, it's funny. Time. It's funny because I, you all talking about. Uh, I guess I have the same classic Yankee knit. That's a, mm -hmm. that's that's the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I have uh, want. I made socks way long ago, and then I said to my daughter, "I really want to make a pair of socks." And we went to this knitting store in on route one in um, York, Maine. Can't think of the name of it now, but the they're really the wonderful. yarn seller. Yes. Yes. I love the yarns. I love it. Cause I can't get to Camden all the time. So they were very lovely. And I actually got alpaca yarn. Oh, nice. Purple. Mm. Yeah. So, so I started it. I mean, my daughter had me waking, making 500 things. So I finished those off. And your Socktober, I was like, oh, yes, this is perfect, because now I'm on to the sock. So this, I was so excited because it's like, okay, my cousin was a fabulous sock and mitten knitter, and she passed away, and I'm yelling at her, like, why did you do that? You know, why can't you be here to help me? So yeah. I have uh, four pointed needles, but when I was, I was going online today, I saw that you can do it in the round. I never knew about that nine inch. But I think I will stick with traditional uh, mm -hmm. needles. And so I have a little bit started now because I ripped out what I had because I didn't like it. Better to rip it out if you don't like it. You bet. So I ripped it out and now I'm starting. And and uh, yeah, so I haven't decided though on the one that I was trying, and maybe you ladies can tell me, we're talking about the pattern. The one that I had started, and this is the sock yarn weight, I was doing knit three pearl one. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure what is the best one to work up your leg. Mm -hmm. If anyone has a has a preference or do you just stick with, you know, when it gets to the leg part. I mean, we're on the we're on the mm -hmm. very beginning now. So I didn't know or I guess some people just do knit stock and that stitch. So does oh, anyone have a preference? It's better to have revving so it fits your leg. Right. To have a little okay. in it. And I, yeah. I, I use uh, Knit 3 Pro 1 a lot on socks. Okay. It's a nice compromise because you get the patterning of the um, stockinette part, but you also get the stretch and, and fit of oh. having some ribbing. The pearl, right. So that's, that's where I think I'll be. And hopefully next week when we see each other again, I'll have more than this done. <laughs> So I was celebrating my birthday in Vermont, but I love Camden is my favorite place in the world. And I also, whenever I've gone up there, I've been to the store all the time and bring home goodies. So, but then I did find the yarn seller and that was lovely. It was too lovely, but I didn't have to pay for it. My daughter paid for her own thing. So that was good. I just had to do the knitting and crocheting. So. Oh my God. Was, I love that. Yeah, she's, I did enable, like she's enabling your habit and she benefits. So, you know. I know. And I told her, I said, I'm doing socks now. So we're going over there this weekend. I said, I think we'll wait to stop till I get the socks done. So I won't feel, you know, stressed about, oh, 
I got to get the socks done and then move on to this. There you so, go. Well, thanks, yeah. Judy. I'm so glad you joined us. I think this is your first knit along with us. Is that right? It is. And I'm very happy and I'll be on board every time. Amazing. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I'll order gonna, two. Oh, well, I'll that's order awesome. two. We, we love it. We always sort of feel like, you know, this is a really investment in our broader community and it's nice to connect with folks who are you know, far from the shop, even here in Maine, that just, you know, we're a uh, geographically spread out state. So it's nice to see some familiar faces, but also really nice to have some, some new faces on. And I want to, let's see, next, is that um, Ophany? I know you're, I think you're Every Knit Stitch Counts. Is that who your Zoom name is? I don't know if you want to yes. hop on. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. I Good. see y'all doing a different Zoom this time. Yeah. So we've got our Socktober happening so right what, now. So this one is about socks? Yep. So we got Socktober is uh, about socks. And we've got, when you sign up for it, we there's the discount. and um, But you're so sweet to check in. So I have to know, where are you in the world right now? In New Jersey. Okay. Oh, my way to awesome. Um, and what what do you got on your needles right now? Right now, I'm doing this sort of. But see, y'all done got me hyped about these socks. See, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now well, I, I, I heard y'all talking about socks. I went to look around the truck at my yard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's part of the wonderful and terrible part of like working in a yarn store is it's basically constant inspiration and distraction from projects I already have going on, right? I know, right? But I might need to get away from them because my kids been asking about socks because the, the one day they messed around and seen a podcast, I think crazy sock lady, and they mm. went to picking out yarn. Can you make these, Mama? These I take these. I said okay, and it been stuck with me ever since. Well, at least my little baby, my my youngest babies, they still want to wear some Mama make. So I'm gonna have I to go around and make them socks. <laughs> I, I <laughs> maybe love this that. Will motivate me, but this is what I'm working on right here. Let's see. Uh oh! Wow, <laughs> four line nice. sweater. Yeah, nice. Oh, and then pretty. this the yarn I'm using. Okay. Oh my god. Uh -huh. god. Nice. And is that a fingering weight yarn? I can't tell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know oh I be god. in all kind of weather. I, I yeah. I be cold, then I'm gonna burn up, then I'm gonna be cold. <laughs> the way my husband be traveling. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and, you know, like the thing about the fingering sweater is it is a nice light layer and that short mm -hmm. sleeve top will feel really nice, I bet. Yeah. But I'm finna get, I'm finna get my, uh, cause I had about a case of nine inch circles. So yep. I'm gonna have to use them. They can't keep saying him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Thank well, you though. Yeah, thanks for hopping in. It's always fun. Oh, uh, for those of you who are new, Ofeni joins us sometimes. Uh, her husband's a long haul trucker. So that's why I asked, where in the oh. world are you? Because sometimes she's all over the place. Um, but thanks for popping in. I hope that you'll check Thank in with you. us again. I will. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, great. Well, let's see. I think we need to hear from Judy. How Judy Iser, Judy E. Yes, <laughs> there's two of us now. Yes, I I started my socks, and Great. I'm using uh, Navia. It's a sock yarn, and it's from the the yarn is from the Faroe Islands. Oh, wow. oh nice! Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna nice. I'm, I'm gonna you keep it hold up right there. I just I want to spotlight you. Oh wow! Nice, nice, mm. pretty. Okay, and I'm just making a basic sock. This is my first sock. Okay, and this is how it's coming. What nice. did you know? Nice. That's and beautiful. I'm using those little nine inch needles, and I love them because the double they're, they're I fun. tried the yeah, I did. I tried the uh, 
double point and the magic loop when I was making the Ramona sweater on the sleeves. And that just was too challenging for me. So I decided I would break down and buy more needles. <laughs> you gotta have the right tools. I know, and I have I have since this whole last year I bought more tools than I would care to even admit to. But I, I enjoy it. it; makes things easier. So that's what I, counts. I thought I'd let y'all know. You know Lisa K. Ross. No. Okay, Lisa K. Ross. She's paper uh, Daisy Creations. She given okay. and she has a special running. On socks, you get like five different designer socks for six dollars right now, and they on oh. uh, Ravelry. I was just okay. letting everybody know. And it was Paper Daisy, was that her name? Yeah, Paper Daisy Creations is okay. her name. Lisa K. Ross. If you pull her up, she got yeah. a special right now. It's like four different things you pick, like volume one, two, three. Yeah. You can't okay. Yeah. That's a great idea. I'll, you know what? I want li to, I'll link to that in the um, description for this video. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. Let's see. I think we still need to hear from Jill. Hi, Jill. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm in uh, Castine, Maine, and I'm knitting some socks that are Regia yarn um, that Arnie and Carlos designed. And I've had this sitting around for a long time, and I really need a pair of socks that go with red. So there we go. Is it and, the Lofoten? Um, is it their Lofoten one? No, I, it's the it's the one that looks like Fair Isle, but isn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. It's sort of cheater Fair Isle. Yeah, yep. Well, that is beautiful. And, and... magic loop. <laughs> magic loop for you awesome well i guess i'm up next and let's see i have a really sweet little bag here that our friend our remote goat friend linda Harmon made for some of us uh, in the shop and sent these up as a surprise she was supposed to come up here to the goat to camden this fall and her plans got derailed and we are so sad to miss her. Um, so I have my cute little Linda bag. It's got a drawstring here. It's even got a little clippy so I can put it on my pants. So, I, you know, Linda, I'm crazy for bags. You know this about me. So bags are my love language if you're watching. So I <laughs> am, <laughs> I'm working on, I've got the, and look at me with the confetti in my sweater and here's the sock, but it's, uh. um, it is, I'm on my nine inch circulars. I also am hooked on these, um, Judy. I love the, <laughs> how easy it is. I go around and around. It's so fast, so fast. And I'm using the DRK Everyday Sock Pattern by Andrea Mowry, Drea Renee Knits. And this yarn is, I actually had some different sock yarn that I did not end up, I started and I got through the toe. And I was like, you know what? I don't like how this yarn, it's, it was, it wasn't very bouncy, if that makes sense. It didn't have a lot of bounce in it. And so it felt a little hard on my hands, almost like maybe a cotton, but it wasn't, it was just not for me. So I was like, you know what? Forget about it. Oh, there was my watch. Siri, you don't need to understand. Um, but <laughs> I picked up this at the shop. It's um, the Land du Nord. It's a uh, watercolor oh, yeah. sock. And I Waterfall. love it. And, it's, and what I, weight is that? What weight is it? Is it? A fin it's a fingering. Yep. It is a fingering. Mm -hmm. But I just, I really, really like it. And yeah, it's, it's, but I, I, I have to say I was a magic looper. And then I tried these nine inch circulars. And I know they are not for everybody. Some people really do not. Because you have to sort of, your hand is, it, you're holding your hand a little differently. Like I'm using this pinky it down. to, can you, I'm using this pinky to kind of like hold this here. So it is a little bit of a different hand move for me, um, but I'm used to it and boy, I love it. So that's what I'm up to. And while I'm on here, I'm giving you actually, I'm spoiling a little bit about the email that you're going to get 
uh, first October on Friday, but I can't not talk about it. Okay. We just got a new book in the shop and it's called Custom Socks Knit to Fit Your Feet. It's Kate Atherley, who we love. She was, I think, uh, editor of Knitty, maybe? Uh, Yep. And she's got multiple books, but here's the thing. This book is pretty nerdy. And by that, I mean, she really dials in to, like, how do we make socks that actually fit our foot? You'll notice that with mine, I'm doing this asymmetrical toe because I kind of like, I've been playing around with that. So I'm making it fit like my actual, the way my toes oh. fit, um, are. But she digs into some of the the nitty gritty where she's saying, okay, so these are the measurements that are important to have. If you, if you, let's say have a, have a foot that doesn't necessarily have the same proportions as the average, which we know that's just, you know, socks and feet come in all shapes, but she gives you a lot of tools for customization. And so you can almost use it like as a workbook to, to plug in your precise number. She talks about ease in socks because that's definitely something that we hear about is using a little negative ease when you're uh, choosing a sock size. But she also talks about things like gauge. She talks about different questions about the ribbing. Like we were just speaking about, you know, Mm -hmm. choosing different ribbings and why you would do that, why we like to have ribbing in socks. It's because of fit. It's because it accommodates our arch. Um, And then for every single pattern in the book, she gives you a top down and a bottom up option, which I find fun. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty jazzed about it. One of our newer employees recommended it. And so, yeah, we just got them in and I just had to buy one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Hey, Beth, I see you hopped on. How are you doing? I am fine. Just finishing up with some work tasks and then jumping on for what's left. Great. So I, I, um, yeah, I started, uh, I always have problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's going to be the solid, like for like, it's a color work around the toe and, the um, the, you know, ribbing. And then I have, let's see, that's the going to be the, mm. so, um, Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, what was the name of the book you were talking about? I since I came in late. Yep, it's called Custom Socks Knit to Fit Your Feet, and I will put it in the chat and also down below. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, I I have like a couple of people I really like their patterns, but um, mm-hmm. they tend to do um, cuff down, and I like toe up. Mm-hmm. Um, Mostly because I don't, I think what I'm going to do instead of like on this one, it's got the regular gusset. Oh, Oh, I think we lost Beth here for a minute. Maybe she'll come right back. Yeah, sometimes we'll just give her a minute while I'm looking for this link. Here we go. Um, uh oh. Well, maybe I'll take her off spotlight. We'll see if she comes back. So, into the chat, I'm putting the custom stocks book. If anybody's interested. Uh, oh, Beth, we lost you for a minute and you, I, you know what? You're back. The Wi-Fi at work has been really awful today. It's been very spotty. Um, so anyway, I was saying like this one, um, I liked, um, I think I'm going to do a um, afterthought heel versus the regular old, you know, gusset because it, mm-hmm. it tends to fit me a little better. But. Nice. Heels are such an interesting thing with socks because it is, it's about like our own heel. And so you have to, I think there's something fun with socks where you're a little bit of a, you can try stuff out and see how it works for you. Um, With this pattern I'm using, the everyday sock, she uses the flegal heel, which I um, really liked how that fit. I don't have one of my other socks that I tried with it, but it's, 
Um, the fun part about these little shorties is that I can actually do the heel all on this needle, which instead of like picking up different needles, which is kind of fun. But the Flegel heel, it's sort of like a wedge. It was, it's named that because somebody named Flegel um, came up with it, but it's pretty comfortable. And I think particularly for me, I've got a little bit of a high arch and I think it works for me for that reason. Yeah, I think the gut, the gust, the thing I don't like the, about the gusset is it's a little too boxy for me. So mm -hmm. it's not as close fitting as like um, some of the other ones that you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll I've do not it, tried but, an afterthought. Well, it's, I mean, it's basically, you know, when you get to the heel, you, you put in, um, you put in, I, I can't waist. think of what you call the yarn, waist yarn, like waist, there you go. waist yarn. And then mm -hmm. you go back and it's more of a, it's, I think it's more, to me, it's more like of a triang triangular type shape than a boxy mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different ones out there but um yeah it's just the whole thing like you don't have that that rectangle down and then out yeah so it looks like a lot of people are enjoying this nine inch circular needle yeah, no well, i do <laughs> not really yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not for don't. everybody. It really, it really isn't for everybody. I think it's if you, if you have the opportunity to try one out, you know, we have one in the shop, and I think it just it feels awkward at first, and some people it feels awkward forever, and they just don't prefer it. I made I finished a hat, and I believe that that was a nine inch up at the top, so mm -hmm. it was a little awkward, not as flowing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get used to it. And uh, that was, uh, you know, where I bought my needles. I live in Nashville, by the way. So I, I'm not real convenient to the cashmere goat, only when I'm up in Maine. And and she, she, the advice she gave, you know, was first of all, to hold your hand. You hold your hands differently than you would other and the more downward. And, mm -hmm. uh, and just give yourself a little bit of time to get used to them. And that's what she advised. And to, to be honest with you, I think that's been good advice. Mm -hmm. And it's basically everyone using a sock yarn then and not using um, worsted weight or the, you said two DKs together. If you put the two DKs together. Two, two it's, it's actually two, two fingerings together. Oh, two fingerings together. And what size needle would you use for that? Um. I'm going to pull up the pattern and I'll put it in the chat for you guys. Um, I wonder if I use like a four. Okay. I don't know if I have it in my projects. I was pretty bad about cataloging my projects in, um, in Ravelry <laughs> until more recently working in the yarn store. But um, let me pull up that. It's a great fun pattern. Two yeah. fingerings. Okay. Yeah. It's called the... Oh, here it is. Um, and again, this is a pattern. You can buy it um, as a, actually, um, let's see. I can share my screen so you can look at it. You can buy it as a toe up or top down. And uh, share screen. There we go. Do, do, do. So it's called the Great Outdoors Socks. This is, happens to be the toe-up oh. one, but they're they're kind of cool. Um, hmm. There's, oops, nope, that was not what I meant to do. They are, so there's, this one has some stitch patterning uh -huh. and kind of like some cable happening. This one is a neat design. I'm not sure you can see it, but this is like a, a, a one by one rib around the center of the foot, which is a really oh, okay. nice sort of way to snug it in at that oh. place where you just want a little bit of, of snug support. Mm -hmm. And then this is a really nice one too, just a very simple broken rib with this kind of like a, I don't know, it looks like Christmas trees or mountains right. or something. Yeah. So what are yeah. they saying for needles? They're saying US size three, um, and either DK weight or, and she said, beginner friendly collection. So holding fingering weight, sock 
fingering weight sock yarn double. Um, yeah, fast. <laughs> and that's at Ravelry. Yep. Yeah, I can put the link in the chat for you too. Um, so I have a question. Does anybody want to share when, 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 when did you knit your first pair of socks? I think Judy E, you're knitting your first pair now, but for anybody. My who first learned, pair. <laughs> yeah. So did anybody want to share how they first learned socks? Probably 40 right. years ago. <laughs> yeah. And, and then Mary I started. Ellen? Um, I learned a, a long time ago, I went into a shop and I had, there were these baby socks in a magazine, okay. knitter some magazine or something. I said, oh, I really like these socks. And the woman said, well, you can make them. And she just said, sit down and handed me, got me the needles and said, this is how you do it. <laughs> And and that's how I learned. She showed me how to do get it on the double pointed needles. And this magazine article was very detailed about how to do it. And then then that shop, they recommended the Yankee knitter pattern. And that's what they taught in their classes. So then I got that. And ever since that, I use the Yankee knitter pattern, which awesome. is like a thread. I've used it so much. <laughs> we have a phys we just ordered more and we just got them in the shop of the physical co physical copy mm -hmm. of the pattern yeah mm -hmm. and but you can also buy it on Ravelry as well that's awesome anybody else want to share their sock make their sock history I learned the how to do socks when I was sailing on the Angelique Wendy okay. Ford who is a wonderful sock she does can sit there and just do it without any kind of patterns mm -hmm. any, anymore. But she she taught me how to do that, and I was very pleased that she did. <laughs> Love that. There's something very special about the feeling of a hand that saw. Yeah. I learned from my mother when I was a little girl, and we didn't have any double pointed needles, so we did them on straight needles and sewed them up. Oh, and we wow. didn't have a pattern. Mm -hmm. We just had another sock that we do we liked. Mm -hmm. At that, and that's a long time ago. So that um, really most of the socks were worsted weight yarn, right? Mm -hmm. Readily available, the old fashioned stuff. Yeah. So it was it was it was fun, you know. I I like having hand knit socks. I knit them for everybody I know. I love that's knitting. Nice. I love it. I think so many of us enjoy it for the portability. It's just so nice to have it handy. It's a small bag. You know, a lot of us have a lot of bags of projects in them, but the socks fit in a small bag and so portable. Um, yeah. And I just have had so much fun with the different sock yarns that are available now. It's really incredible. Tell me. Has did anybody... you... oh, go ahead. Did you like the fit of the Stephen West sock along sock? I did, actually. Yeah, I finished mine. They're very different from every other pair of socks, but I like them. They're really I, substantial. Substantial. And I I can't remember what part of the pattern now off the top of my head, but um, around my instep, it's not snug uncomfortable, but it feels like a nice little, like, it just like, it feels well fitting, I think. Yes. It was a fun knit along. I, I enjoyed it. I'd like to do I'm another. I'm for sure going to do next summer's surprise sock along. I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe we could yeah. even do it as a summer, you know, yeah. relaxed knit along because in the mm -hmm. summer where we're so busy in the shop, we really like do not have the wherewithal to, you know, get a bunch of stuff. But he he's putting together all the awesome tutorials and and the update so maybe we could just sort of have a make along as you know just like we're all doing it together and maybe we check in uh on a zoom good idea i i wish that stephen west would do zooms every week when he's doing those instead of just doing instagram and recording videos i'd love i'd love <laughs> to have an hour for 
from him in Amsterdam. Wouldn't that be totally cool? Yes. <laughs> so cool. Did anybody catch the Fiberside chat with him a couple weeks ago? Oh, I missed it. It was really, really good. He's just so positive. I just love how positive and upbeat he is, too. He um, was kind of doing a little bit of a retrospective with some of his uh, mystery sh mystery knit along shawls. And so he sort of year by year went and kind of, you know, took you through some of the design elements that he was going for and the reasons why he does certain things. But there was something that was so great, which he said was, um, you know, I, you know, do a certain thing for a while, but, you know, if I start to get bored, I figure you guys would start to get bored too. So that's when I know it's time to introduce another element or change a color. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Anybody else want to share a sock story? So I started, um, I'm, I'm a relatively like, new newer knitter not um and I, I wanted to do something different um but i knew i i wasn't uh double points were hard for me so i was at a, a yarn store on a vacation and they had these funky like sort of l-shaped um mm. sock needles so <laughs> um you only you only did on two of them you, you know, oh, you only wow. have to use two needles, but, um, and they're, I can't remember. I, I feel like they're German. Um, Addy Turbo, Addy Turbo. No, they weren't Addies. These were, um, uh, it was some kind of German brand. If I can find them at home, I'll um, try to bring them next, you know, put, throw them in my bag. So the first sock I did was just a straight up tube sock. Um, no, no heel, like, you know, and, and it was not, I mean, it came out, it came out well, like it fit the person I made it for. And then I, um, then I went to a class on how to um, knit smaller things using two 16 inch needles. And then that's when I really started, you know, being able to knit more um, like with socks because um, the, the two 16 inch just works for me. Nice. I think I must have tried a sock and I don't know, I, I think it must have been probably about 20 years ago, you know, when I sort of really first got back into knitting. And I don't, I don't know who inspired me to do it. I just remember I had the Yankee Knitter pattern and I don't mm -hmm. have any recollection. No, you know what I do? I think, oh, wow, I was in college. Okay. And I got the Yankee Knitter pattern and I had worsted weight yarn and I made like hiking boot socks for family members one Christmas. Nice. So that's a while, like 30 years ago. And then um, I think made socks for my boys when they were little and yeah. So I, but every now and then I sort of forget about socks and how much I enjoy them. And so I don't do them for a little while, but I'm really like loving them ever since the summer with the Stephen West. I'm uh, I'm back on the sock game. I made some shorty socks for myself um, this summer using the DRK pattern, just making them shorter. And I really love a short hand knit sock. I think that's, mm -hmm. I remember Beth, you were the one that kind of inspired me about that. Mm -hmm. How high did you bring it up? It's kind of an ankle sock, you know, which, mm -hmm. which is, you know, sometimes I'm wearing sneakers in the summer right. in the shop when I'm on my feet. Um, yeah, let me see. I'll pull, I, I can shoot since my Ravelry is right up here. I will pull up my, okay, let's share the screen. So these uh, were my short ones. And so you can see they just come up like okay. up over my ankle a little bit. Over oh, well, the ankle, yeah, yeah. And then this one, you might be able to see, this is this is how the, let me see if I can zoom in. This is how the flegal heel is looking with this two by oh. two rib. And so the back is actually flat stockinette, kind of like a little wedge shape. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Well, yeah, that's fun. Really and then 
I have the the crazy Stephen West ones too. Let's see, except for I have to move. Oh them. yeah, there they are. There they are. But my Zoom people were covering it for the moment. Let's see. Yep, oh, here I they are. That. I love those. I those love are those. Out of play. Yeah. Yeah, the I love contrast those. Contrast blast socks. I really like this little um, toe pattern. The heel pattern was great. I don't know if I have a good picture. Maybe this one will show the heel was so neat because it was basically just a little slip stitch pattern. I had never thought about doing yeah. that uh, as a reinforcement oh, technique. Yeah. But it was basically like if you've made the the shift by Andrea Mowry or something, same concept, just sort of sort of uh, alternating little blips of that color. It's just so, so, so nice. That's yeah, I really think this exceptional. is- Oh, thanks. Um, Jill, I think it's in this middle area, like right by the instep, that is the part that feels like it's just nice and snug and fits so well. Well, look at the shape of those stripes under the arch. Aren't they out of sight? Mm-hmm. But my I, this might even of all is this heel. Yes. I'm circling it on my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I'm trying to circle it too. I can't do it. But we know what we're talking about. Um. But yeah, I will most certainly do um, another one of his knit mm. sock knit along. I, I was tempted to do that today, but all my good yarn is not here. It's elsewhere. Mm. The the contrast blast, do another contrast blast. I, want, I was tempted to do, to do that for your knit along just because it'd be mm -hmm. I, I definitely want to do another pair. Yeah, agreed. I found it like, I don't know, there was something about the, I've never done anything mystery knit along before, but there was something about that experience of getting the clue every week. It was, I felt like I was nine years old getting something in a <laughs> cereal box or something. When you when you get a chance, Iris, I'm looking at my Ravelry page right now. You should look at Kate Davies' poozles. I think you might like them. Oh. Have you seen those? They're they're socks that they're that she made for wearing around the house, and she's made dozens of pairs of them for her house. And they stop okay. ankle only. I put them on, and they, it felt so weird to have my socks stop at my ankle that I decided <laughs> to put a top on mine. But, oh but wow me, i'm gonna have to let share me my tell screen. you they were fun to knit that is such an oddball construction and they're so cool looking when you get there yeah that's them oh oh, oh my wow. god but if you want to turn it into a regular sock you can just keep going and make a leg and just oh. knit. but they are oh. out of state they're not that hard to knit uh, if you're used to color work at all, I mean, even if you're just a beginner, but the construction is so crazy and so much fun. Tell us about the construction. We're on the edge of our seat here. Yeah. Um, toe up. Toe and, up. Okay. And very shaped. And I don't remember a lot about them because it's been quite a while. Oh, look at the heel. I'd forgotten the mm. little snowflake on the heel. Yeah. I think I would do again just for the heck of it on another pair of socks. Oh my God, there's so many beautiful ones. This is so it, neat. It, it doesn't take much yarn, so you can use, you know, whatever, especially if you have any Jameson yarn around. It's really great ah. for that. And oh all of her God. all of her designs these days use Jameson. Wow. Oh, I just oh had God. a birthday and guess what I got? I got the other what? the rest of the Poozle kit. That is, did you see the second pair with the blue? I yeah. have all the yarns lined up to make a sweater in that pattern. Oh, and so I, I'm going to start that as soon as I can clear the decks. Yeah. <laughs> Clearing the decks. I love it. <laughs> well, happy birthday. And um, I just love that turn of phrase. So clear the decks on our projects, except for I can never seem to clear the decks. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. I've, I've got one project right now that is ridiculous that I have simply got to clear the decks and get finished, which is my groomer of my dog, who's a big, who's a fluffy white dog, mm. gave about a bushel of fleece that she had just taken when she cut the hair of a great, great Pyrenees. Oh my God. You know what they look like? They're huge dogs and they have yeah. white, long hair. 
And so I had all this white long hair from this dog. And so I took it home and I first thing I said to her was, do I have to wash this or didn't you just wash this dog? And she said, wash it. So I washed it and hoped it wouldn't felt it, it didn't. And then I started spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and ended up with maybe three big skates of yarn. And then I said, what am I gonna make with this? So what I'm making is, I don't know if you know the 1898 hat from Siemens Institute. Mm -hmm. oh, fabulous. Um, I knit a lot of hats and send them to them for people who go to sea. It's a terrific hat. And for Maine hunters, fishermen, sailors, it's perfect. Anyway, so it, say, the, say the pattern one more time so I can note it. It's Siemens Church Institute, C SCI. Yeah. Uh, has loads of free patterns that they encourage you to knit as, and I, I just started a new another project. I try to send them one box every Christmas for their Christmas at sea. They go aboard ships with lots of hand knits and they just, people all over the country knit for them. For the sailors who are stuck on their ship at Christmas and very oh. far from home. And so in any case, these hats fit close to your head. Um, you knit kind of a headband that has three dimensional little ear cups. You knit that flat and then it folds naturally. And then you pick up the top. And so this part is double and this oh. part is single. It's very oh. close. And here's what, this white fluffy, I guess I took it downstairs because I was online with some knitting friends earlier to show them. This fluffy white hat, and I'm going to make great Pyrenees ears to go on it. <laughs> <laughs> that are gonna stick up and be triangular. And then who's getting it is my groomer, who will laugh, oh. she has a great <laughs> sense of humor. She will actually wear it, I'm sure of that. But that is fantastic. But it, the catch is it sheds <laughs> I'm knitting along and every time I work on it I have to brush off my black pants and vacuum the rug but oh I'm my gosh so I'm kind of hoping that by the time I finish it and wash it one more time I'll beat the shedding but who knows dogs shed yeah However, I put the Siemens Church hat in the chat. I think it's it's the I think it's the one. It's the 1898, and it's got that like the the ears kind of come down. It's very close fitting, and it's fun to knit. It's really fun to knit. I've made a bunch of them for people who go to sea, whether they're fishermen or sailors or big ship people, and people who hunt love them. I've made some even in fluorescent orange for hunter friends. Mm. Um, and I have a couple that I put on in the winter because they're so nice and easy and warm, you know. Mm. So I recommend what, that. What um, weight yarn? Worsted. Mm -hmm. And it's a great one for using up that old Bartlett yarn you don't know what to do with kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I've made some with really fancy yarn and they came out very nice. Um, but what it's designed for is for just plain old worsted. My friend made one. Actually, you probably know her, Tannis Williams, who used to run Strength Theory. Oh, I, I know of her, yeah. Yeah, I knit with her every Saturday. And she made one to wear for winter hiking. And she made a mm. hole right in the top here for her ponytail to come out. Ah. And it was ah. cute as can be. It, of course, it, she mm. used her own dyed beautiful yarn, you know, and which is she and Karen ran their business together. And Seven Sisters yarn is is gorgeous, mm. and it's a continuation of the same thing. Oh, it's so cool! So, yeah, it's anyway. I recommend that hat. And there are a couple of others that they have in their collection that are also very nice. The, mm. a, a watch cap that has cables on it that is just simple and easy oh. and nice mm. so anyway that that's that and if anybody's interested in joining up um i send off a box from maine maritime in castine every year in fact i try to do two a year and i'm mm. looking right now for some more hats to send to them so if you feel like you'd like to join up on a project i'm recruiting like crazy you know? <laughs> And Jill, what's the best way to, what's the best way to um get in touch with you if people are interested 
Oh, why don't I put my email in the chat? Um, I have an, an email and I do I do the Down East uh, Fiber Arts newsletter. If anybody's interested, you can send me your email and I'll put you on my list. Okay, um, and I'll add that in the show notes too below this video for people that are watching later. Yeah, so I'll oh, watch for your, if you want to put the email in the chat, then I'll transcribe it as well. I'll, I'll do that. And I've been sending you the the uh, Yeah. You, if you look actually at the top of the newsletter, the email's right there. It's, oh, perfect! I can just down yeah. fiberarts at gmail dot com. I thought so. one word, and I can't believe that I was able to get that email name, but I was. Hmm. During the pandemic, we went big time to Zoom, and some of it has stuck. Although a lot of people are preferring to meet in person, and I like Zoom. I think it's very nice to be able to, wherever you are, to join in, you know, and to keep yeah. keep in touch with your knitting friends all over the country, since so many of them are only here during the summer. Totally. Zoom's our friend. Anyway, I'm going to write that in chat, if I can find chat Perfect. here. Um, well, great. Anybody have any tips that they like to use in their socks or techniques that we should know about that you love? I was just reading in this custom sock book today that, um, and probably other people are well aware of this, I just wasn't, but, um, when you have that issue with like a slip slip knit where you might get a little bit of a different sort of like it looks different than your knit two together and the suggestion was um that when you come to the stitch in the next row around where that slip slip knit was you're gonna want to knit into the back loop haven't tried this myself um but that seemed like it would make some sense because it was saying that it would just sort of tighten up that stitch and kind of like force it to lie lie a little flatter. Has anybody ever tried that? Nope. All right. Well, we'll have to report in if we try it. Anybody have any questions to ask or just enjoying the moment and cruising along here? Yeah, I have a question on that for a beginner, which, which heel would you recommend? Which particular one that would probably not drive me off my. Well, which off pattern edge? are you using the knitting? Are you using the Yankee knitter pattern? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I followed your directions because I originally bought uh, some fingering yarn. Okay, fine yarn, which I really, really liked. It was similar to this, but much finer. And uh, then I just went, I said, well, I'm going to go out and get the worsted weight. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> So I would just, I, I mean, I, especially because this is your follow. first sock. Yeah, yeah, I would just follow what what is recommended in the pattern because really this first time around anyway, and probably the first few times you make a sock, you're just, you're getting, you're getting used to the, the shape, the structures. And so I think that yeah. I would, that would be my, my, my idea would just be follow what the pattern says. And, and, and that's just a very classic gusset heel flap kind of a, kind of a heel and just know that there's other ones out there eventually if you want yeah. to get adventurous i went through the video and uh that you rec that was recommended and i was mm -hmm. overwhelmed by all the different options i did i had no <laughs> idea there were so many options out there <laughs> a lot of options yes you um well we are at the oh go ahead I was just going to say, you can really trust that Yankee sock pattern. It really works. Mm -hmm. It's magic mm -hmm. the first time you use it. 
Well, so well, far, I'm, I'm sorry. No, oh, go ahead. So far, I, I sort of read through at least the first page and I thought, well, this looks pretty reasonable, <laughs> this pattern. <laughs> Well, and Judy, in the um in the YouTube resources that are linked in that welcome email that you got, I yeah. added some um some I add, there was one resource that I added from um one of a YouTube creator that I follow called Pearl Together, and Pearl Together actually did this like pretty in depth free like let's walk through making every step of the sock, and so I think okay. in the YouTube playlist that I created, I couldn't link to Pearl Together's entire playlist, but I linked to like the first video in that playlist. And if you click on it and watch it, there's a link down below that video to the rest of the thing. So if you, as okay. you come to the heel, it might, if you've never made one, it might be helpful just to sort of watch oh, yeah. one or two videos just to kind of get a feel for what's coming. Yeah, I, I have found that, um, videos are very very helpful oh my god so helpful mm -hmm. I mean, well listen we are just at the top of the hour and i want to honor everybody's time but it is so nice to have some new faces on here thanks for joining us judy g and thanks for joining us um gwen and um so nice to see some newer folks and some returning folks as well and we'll catch up with everybody next wednesday that sounds yeah, wonderful. Good. Okay. Yep. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much Bye. for spending the time with us. Yeah. Awesome. See you soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Happy knitting. You too. Okay. Bye. Oops.